In our last video, we saw the seven barriers. One, inertia grips our system. Two, we lack feedback. Three, political donations block feedback. Four, non-responsive bureaucracy blocks feedback. Five, feedback recipients are disempowered. Six, wealth concentration hinders equity. And seven, we devalue diversity. We'll now look at the barriers in detail, starting with one, inertia grips our system. A great deal of resources have been invested in an old industrial system that is powered by fossil fuel. Once the infrastructure to extract, distribute, and use non-renewables is in place, it's deceptively comfortable to keep using it. The wealth created in these systems empowers established industries which work to ensure the system maintains itself. It is a cycle. This cycle is often perceived as greed and an inherent flaw within our decision makers, but at least as germane is the inertia of business as usual. Business dislikes risk, it dislikes uncertainty, and works to maintain the status quo. Socially beneficial government actions that may threaten change are met by well-resourced legal efforts and significant advertising budgets to keep courts and public opinion on the side of industry. Total lobbying dollars in the U.S. increased nearly 2.5 times between 1998 and 2007, from $1.45 billion to $3.3 billion, and has since largely maintained that level. Inertia is enabled by how we and our businesses set up accounting systems, which aren't incorporating all the real costs of our purchasing decisions. Real cost accounting for something like building construction would not only look at the direct material and labor costs, but also energy use, water consumption, the water depletion coming from that water consumption, greenhouse gas generation, public health impacts, and much more to understand the total implications of creating that building. We can also be personally vested in inertia. In the face of stress, at least around more distant threats where we have less agency on solutions, like climate change, it can be mentally comfortable to set the idea aside as it saves us energy in the short term. Many more affluent people who care about the issue haven't done basic things like curtail their jet travel because they're accustomed to traveling when and where they want for vacations and conferences. This is inertia. Not attending to more distant risks has real survival benefits and real reason that pattern is present in our lives. However, it is detrimental when those reasons block us from taking on a small risk in order to avoid a much larger risk, and changing our business as usual a little to avoid having to change it a lot down the road. Certainty based on past experience only works if the past is a good map of the future. In our modern world, that's a big assumption.